to put the rice on the pan just like that and I leave it there until um, until I feel that it's like warm and and then I start adding the the no, liquid to no, it. For sure. and Okay, so right now I'm checking with my hands. I promise to clean them, but um, I'm checking if the rice is getting warm enough. And then once it's like at the right temperature, I can start adding the wine. One thing that is true that we really wanted and was also the set thing in our house in Milano is to have the kitchen as the center. How often do you make it? Um, you make, I mean this one. This is... Um, it's it's a really common and traditional like from the re region I come from. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's like honestly, there's no like schedule for it. Like it's not like we eat it once a month or something. But it's something that if we want to be closer to our culture or tradition, it's definitely something that we can do. And it's super easy for us since it's like part of our culture. And wait, wh where is it for, in Italy from? Um, Lombardia, which is like top center in North. the yeah. As this, um, as I'm cooking and it just needs like boiling too much, I put the temperature down because it's not supposed to boil. It's just supposed to like slowly start uh, heating up. But this is basically like dices to make the. Um, it's it's kind of like. Not really water, but like flavored water uh -huh. to add to the rice while you cook it. Mm -hmm. Let me just. So this, it's like um, it's kind of like flavored water mm -hmm. that I add to the rice when I see that it's starting to kind of dry, get drier in the pan, and this helps with the flavor, but also not sticking to the pan at the bottom of it. Um, because when that happens, you basically ruin the whole plate because most of the heating is like taken from the rice that is stuck to the pan. And yeah, and it's mostly for um, keeping it um, moist. You can never leave it alone. Like you always have to be there mixing and making sure the rice isn't sticking to the sides or the bottom. And also what we just did with the wine in the past when we didn't have all this technology and cool like um, stuff in the kitchen it was made with uh, onions mm -hmm. because it wasn't really part of the recipe but the um, but the rice was stored in um, in bags made of like a really weird material that smelled that um, left the rice with a really bad smell and that transferred in the taste of the plate. So they, they added the onion to take that um, taste away and help it and it make it a better, better plate. When did you learn how to make it? Um, well, I've learned it, me personally, uh, two weeks ago. Okay. Um, but it's something that my dad was taught by his mom and so on and so forth. So, forth. so it's something that you pass on by generation. Was it something you made before with your parents, or did you did recently you like discovered it kind of like? Oh no, we I made it with my parents because because I really enjoy cooking and I wanted to learn more about my culture in particular because I've never really made that kind of made that kind of dishes and I wanted to try it mm -hmm. and this was like the first step to it. Mm -hmm. And do you have a, a recipe that you always follow? Um, yeah, it's the one my dad taught me. Mm -hmm. I I think that I um, I believe that's the traditional way we do it. But um, I know that every family kind of has their own. They makes their own changes to it to adapt to their own taste. Yeah. So it's not a recipe that I wrote down and I can follow the steps by it. It's kind of like. Like my grandma said, it's like a heart feeling. You you know how much how much water you have to add just by looking at it. It's not something that you can follow on a, on a paper and tell you exactly what to do. Yeah, 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 I understand. So it's not something that you look at the paper, the measurements, you just kind of yeah. go along and yeah. change it. You, you, keep, you kind of feel it in the moment. Yeah, it's really interesting. And it's only part, it's, it's part
popular in the north or is it popular everywhere? Um, well, in the past it was only popular in the north, but uh, now it's like everyone knows about it, but it doesn't mean that everybody cooks it. So if you go to the, in the north of Italy, yes, they know what this is, but they might not be good at it or they might not do it because it's not part of their own traditions. Is it a dish that you'll make uh, at a certain, like, there are seasons where you make it, there are seasons where you don't make it? Um, well, it's definitely more of a, um, it's a warm dish, so maybe it's in summer you can make some changes to it and, and make it more like a fresh dish, but it's normally in autumn and winter that we eat this. And what would you say does this dish um, mean to you? Well, it's, it definitely has some special sort of meaning because it's connected to my culture. And since I don't live there anymore, it's it's a way for me to feel connected with my people, with the people I, I, uh, I was surrounding myself with while I lived there. And it kind of reminds myself of my roots and my culture as base. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the hard part for me is to um, make sure the rice doesn't stick to the pan because that's so easy, that happens, and you screw up everything if that, that happens, and it's so bad, like you have to start everything back up again. And I think the other hard part is to um, keep track of time. Because as I told you before, it's not a recipe that you can follow up the paper that says, oh, keep it 20 minutes at uh, a low flame. And then you, you put a timer and you do that. No, this is like, you taste it and you're like, oh, maybe it's two minutes longer. Or um, I don't know, I, I have to add more water because this uh, tastes really dry or something. So I think those are the two main challenges for to it. Did you ever make this with like your grandma or someone else in your family that is not your parents? Um, not this specific uh, recipe, just because I've learned it uh, legit two weeks ago. But um, definitely cooking is a way that we show love to each other. So maybe not rice but for example Christmas it's like a big thing where me and my grandma I mean I would help my grandma cook the dinner for my aunt and for my dad when he um, when he attempts to uh, get to the levels of my grandma but she outcomes him every single time Sappi che io devo mettere. Um, Sappi che devo mettere queste per tipo due minuti ancora a cucina. No, no, ancora a tutto. Ancora a tutto. Would you eat this kind of dish uh, like whenever you're in Italy that like like not well not store bought but like in restaurants or stuff like that? I mean um, definitely the city where I come from they do offer this kind of dish and sometimes I do eat it just because I want to feel at home but um, from where I come from we have different dishes that give, give me that same feeling so I if I eat them too I get the same kind of idea in my mind. And were you making this when, with your parents just because you liked cooking or because it's a family thing? Um, I think it's both. Just because, yes, I do love cooking and I really like learning about my culture. But also because in Italy, and I think in my family we really do that, it's food as a way of showing love and care for each other. And the fact that my grandma trusts me with sharing her tips or her um, her recipes or her ideas for new things, it, it might not sound much to someone outside of my family, but for me it's a huge thing because cooking is, all, is our culture, it's what uh, we are based on. And um, for the fact that my grandma believes in me and lets me like help her, it's a huge thing. Yeah. That my, my grandma's a great cook. I think it's a, 
because of practice and years and years of cooking for so many people. And where does she live? She lives in Milan, where this dish is from. So I think it's just because of practice and knowledge of the kitchen and the ingredients. Because I was talking with her on the phone the other day when I told him, oh, I told her, um, oh, I'm gonna do this dish for a video that um, a girl from school is shooting, and she's like, oh, you have no idea how lucky you are, but remember that a good dish it's made by good ingredients. So I, I had I had a budget for my cooking, so I wanted to go to Albert Heijn to get most of the ingredients, like the rice. And my grandma was like, no, you have to go to the Italian uh, supermarket because that won't be the same. You have to go to the Italian supermarket. It's like no discussion. So we had to drive there and get all the ingredients right because she would not let me do this dish if I didn't do it with the right ingredients. So your idea about the cooking and sharing like love and stuff, is that, is that a thing that you think a lot of the Italian families do or is it... Yeah, I think all the Italian families have that kind of... It's part of the culture. Yeah, it's, it's our base. It's what we believe in. I wouldn't say it's a religion, but it's real close to it. And of course there are the people that are really good at it and they keep it, they stick to the tradition. And then there are the people that are more innovative and want to <coughs> want to base it on the tradition, but make it different. So it just really depends on how, who you meet and how they make, and how they see the tradition, how they change it. If you didn't make it for a while, would you miss it? Um, the taste, I, I don't know about because it's not my favorite dish, but definitely uh, making it, yes, because it's it's the first dish that I've learned to make from my culture, and it it will always have like some special meaning to me. So yeah, I think I will miss it in the making, like in the process of making it. But the taste, I'm not sure, just because it's not my favorite. And um, so. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna off the flame, I'm gonna add uh, butter and um, cheese, parmesan cheese. Is this a very important ingredient or? Um, yeah, you definitely feel it in the taste because um, they add texture, one, yes, but also um, they enhance the flavor of everything. And you see that the butter is melting real fast because there's so much heat that it's kept inside the rice. Mostly you make Italian food or would you, what do you generally like to cook? Um, well, me personally, I don't really do like main courses. I like um, desserts more. But I definitely try to use Italian, um, not just recipes, but um, ingredients. So, for example, something really basic, I do so much with uh, Nutella, like desserts with that. Because, one, it's, I love it, but two, it's like... It is also, it's also Italian. Yeah, so it's like, it's close to my tradition. But whenever I cook for like me or my brother or my family, it's always Italian dishes. So usually when this is... When the rice is done, you have to do like sort of a wave. So it's kind of like when you do a press or something, you go like this with a pan and the rice goes up and down. And it helps with air bubbles. I'm not there at that level quite yet, so I'm not going to do that. We 